think of tender, juicy, falling off the bone meat. Hi, I'm Gatwei. The Leo Tinapika braised beef shop ribs. Trust me, once you make this once, you'll be making it over and over again. Let's do this. For the ingredients, you're going to need the short ribs themselves. So you cut them along the bone. You see how it is? So like this. Don't worry even if it's fatty. The fat will render when you're cooking and you can be able to even scoop it out if you want. So the short ribs, we need the salt, our seasoning, garam masala, some little paprika, rosemary twigs, bay leaves, tomato paste, some crushed ginger and garlic, huge carrot chunks, some onions. We're going to need some stock. So these are two beef cubes and our black pepper. We'll start by searing the short ribs. So before we sear, we're going to generously season with salt and black pepper. So you just take your salt, drizzle over the short ribs. Don't worry, it looks a lot, but it helps in getting the meat all seasoned up. Then you take your pepper, As you're doing this, ensure your skillet or the pan you're going to cook with is on the heat and you've added like a tablespoon of oil. I'm using some vegetable oil, sunflower. Yes, so now we've seasoned this side, we're going to sear and as the seasoned side is searing, we'll season the other side. So let's move to the stove top. So the purpose of searing is to brown the meat and also lock in all the juices. So our pan is hot, the oil is hot. So you put the season side down and we're going to sear all the sides with the meat. So this side, this side, and this side, and this side, and the other side. So you want it to brown before turning over. As I've told you before, I'm cooking mine in the pressure cooker. And now since my pressure cooker doesn't have such a wide surface area, I opt to sear here, then I'll transfer everything else into the pressure cooker. And again, if you have a Dutch oven, you can do everything from there. Yes. or if you have those slow cookers as you can see our meat is beautifully brown I'm setting it aside in this bowl there that's our meat the same skillet we're going to add onions if you feel the oil has reduced you can add about a tablespoon which I'm going to do so just give the onions a stir give them two minutes to just cook until translucent We are doing this on medium heat. Don't worry, the brown bits you see on the pan here, when we deglaze, they'll all be lifted from the pan because this brown bit is part of the flavor that arose from the searing of the beef. In with the garlic and ginger. So this stuff for a minute until you start smelling the garlic. Then we go in with our tomato paste. Stir it around so that you get it cooking. 
so this is a perfect recipe to try when there's no shortage of tomatoes because just a tablespoon of tomato paste and it does the work so yeah we stir the tomato paste then now we go in with our spices the garam masala and the paprika notice i'm not seasoning again because first we had pre-seasoned the short ribs then we're going to use the stock and i'm using the beef cubes and usually those ones are usually high on sodium so we don't want to end up over salting the food so there you go and now the rest of the spices as i've told you i'm transferring everything to my pressure cooker so i don't want to add the meat now what i'm going to do is i'm going to deglaze the pan so normally when deglazing the pan you can either choose to use beer red wine or just stock i'm using stock so you hear that sizzle then you just use your wooden spoon to stir the bottom to remove all the brown bits and then like that you deglaze your pan so in case you're using beer or red wine to deglaze use about a cup and then let it reduce so that the alcohol cooks off and then you're just left with the flavor of the beer or the red wine so now the next thing will be i'll transfer the pots i'll bring the pressure cooker here then i'll put everything in the pressure cooker and then we'll let it work the magic so i'm just going to add everything inside and i'll also run some hot water in the pan so that none of the wonderful juices are left on the pan so as that is happening also the rest of my meat oops it's always flashing on my camera guy so there you go and then the carrots here you can choose to add the carrots now or you add them much later i want to add them now because i like the way they get so tender and they just melt in your mouth so there goes my carrots and yes we'll let this come to a boil gentle boil and then cover the pressure cooker with the lid then give the pressure cooker time i usually let it cook for with with five to six hisses yeah once it's come to a boil i'm going to cover with my lid the the leads the handle broke but well the pressure cooker still works so it usually has instruction close open i need to align this part to this part so i place it like that and then now i'll glide now it's hot glide closed now you see they're aligning now it's closed when it comes to opening we open the other way around but that one is another process and then since the it's already boiling there's sort of some steady steam coming out of here i don't know whether you can see so i'll put the valve there it's on uh, low low medium low heat so i'll let that cook as again i've said five hisses i uh, just here to mention with this recipe there are various ways of cooking it if you don't have a pressure cooker you can just cook it in your normal sofuria the only problem is that it will take longer which is not really a bad issue you can start cooking the meal maybe at around noon if you want to have it for dinner so what you'll do you'll follow all the steps of the searing just as i've shown you but now when you you put the stock you cover you put it on your, on the burner and then you put the least of heat so you want it to cook slowly and you let it cook there for four to six hours depending on the time you have on hand so you'll just keep checking occasionally and the reason why we're putting the little heat is so that the water does not evaporate you want it to cook in that stock so that's one way if you don't have a pressure cooker if you have a pressure cooker you'll do the method i've shown you if you have a dutch oven dutch oven are this heavy uh, set cast iron pan, uh, cooking casseroles so you do the same process the browning uh, the searing everything once you put the stock you put the dutch oven in the oven to bake uh, to cook in the oven again low heat or low temperature 
for the oven three to five hours. So essentially that's it. So there's a pressure cooker, there's the sufuria method, and there's also the method of putting it in the oven. Yeah. So here is our sauce. It's heased six times. Now, as you can see, it's a bit light. If you are doing it on the stove, sto uh, stove top, it would thicken so beautifully. But now we want to thicken it a bit. So take a bit of cornstarch or just all-purpose flour, like a tablespoon. Dissolve it in some cold water. Then put it here and start to cook it. So there is mine. It's a bit thick because I used hot water. Don't be like me. Use cold so that it doesn't thicken. And then now we're going to stir it. And then just give it like five minutes to cook down. And it, as it cooks down, our sauce will thicken. And then it will also be glossy. It will be amazing. And look at those carrots. They are completely cooked. Yes, they look whole. But if I, if I was to pierce with a fork, they would just disintegrate. So yeah. So I'm giving it a short while. As you can see, the consistency is changing. And then we'll go to tasting it. Oh, yeah, before that, just before serving, ensure you remove the bay leaves, the rosemary twigs. Yes. And we are done. This dish is a labor of love in terms of time, but in terms of difficulty, I wouldn't say it's difficult. It's intermediate. So we're going to give it a taste. It's perfect with mashed potatoes. There's a day I also had it with, had it with charcoals. So when you dip the chapatis into the sauce, oh my goodness, as in, amazing. So let's give it a taste. I have a fork here to show you how tender it is. Let me just put it aside. You see how easily it falls. Look, look at that meat. Look, look how tender. That's how tender the meat is. And the carrots have disintegrated. Let's give this a taste. Simply amazing, very flavorful, a hearty meal, as in you feel like you're getting a thousand hugs. Very hearty, delicious, perfect to serve for your guests. Maybe you can start cooking early in the morning. So yes, there you have it. Braised beef short ribs. For the recipe, check the link in the description bar. And for me, Gatui, Kwaheri. Woo!